Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how you can actually plot uh, with with bubbles, a, a chart with bubbles using ASP.NET MVC as our user interface and then using Python as a backend. So I'll also show how you can use Python on its own uh, to be able to plot your charts with bubbles uh, and also how you can call it up from ASP.NET. Okay, so I'll give you a quick demo of what we're actually trying to achieve. Okay, so increasingly what we what we do is that we call up a, a web service uh, to be able to to uh, perform some function for us. So rather than having our own backend infrastructure, we can actually use a, a, a charting system like the Plotly. So in this case, what we're doing is that uh, we can call up the uh, the the, the, uh, the function, uh, pass it some parameters, and then we'll get a chart back which we can integrate into our own uh, application. Okay, so in that way we we actually keep our code quite lightweight, and we're using the backend service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up a Python code from our MVC infrastructure. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the basic uh, setting for this. Okay, so this is the basic outline of, of the code. Uh, so what we have is uh, we have our main web page here. So what we'll do is that uh, from our link, the link will do uh, an HTTP GET. Okay, if we have a button, uh, then it can do uh, a post. Okay, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll, we'll integrate it in with the with the get there. That then takes the parameters that are required uh, for the plot. We'll feed it into our backend Python code. The Python code then calls up uh, the API and makes an API call to Plotly. Plotly will then generate the chart for us. We'll turn back a URL pointer to the chart, then the Python code will finish and return back the URL which is then integrated into the iframe. Okay, so we can integrate Ajax if we want. If we want to do a post, we can make sure that we only update the code here. But in this case what we'd be doing is integrating with the with a get uh, so the whole page will actually refresh. Okay, so that's the basic operation. Uh, so you can see how it all fits together. Right then, so there, there is is what we're after, and we should be able to try different parameters. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm passing in the parameters through the HTTP GET. We can see there if you look down at the bottom there. Then there's an X file. In fact, if we just click on one here. You can see the way that I've done this. It just takes a little minute. It's quite a complex chart. There's quite a bit of data to be read in and then analyzed. So it's just generating now. So if you actually have a look at the uh, the the URL, you actually see the parameters are passed in through uh, the the URLs. So there's X file, X file is given us our x axis, y val is the next parameter, and then z val. So the three values are sent and through our HTTP get. Okay, so that's going to th those parameters will actually be parsed, taken from the form, and then uh, from the from the taking from the the request to get, and then they'll be then passed into the Python script. And plotted. Okay, so first, look, what we'll do is we'll actually have a look at our script first. And this is an example here, but what I've done is I've actually taken out my username and API key. So, what we need to do is to be able to get uh, an account with Plotly. And in this case, what I do is I pass in the parameters, such as the name of the of the graph. We're going to produce the x-axis, the y-axis, uh, 
the data set, the CSV, and then the Z value. So we're going to be using pandas to be able to read in and create our basic data set for it. Then after that, what we'll do is we'll go around and we'll uh, add each each of our bubbles into a, into a data set. So in this case, uh, this is our data set. This is the X and the Y. And then we get the marker for uh, the uh, the data point. So if you see there, that's the marker that's, that's given there. And then we're given a name. So the name is what appears actually over here. Okay, so this is taken roughly from the, de the demonstrator on the Plotly website. So the one thing, if you want to make it public and allow other people to, to view it, you've got to make the sharing public, otherwise it will be private. Uh, and then if you don't want it to open up automatically, uh, if you're calling it from a web service, then you've got to do auto open equals f uh, false. If you just want to run Python on its own, then the auto open becomes true, and then we can actually plot the volume. Then we can see the end of it. We just print the URL out. The URL is going to be picked up by our MVC or our web page, and then that will integrate it into the iframe. Okay, so there's the that's the the basic operation of, of what we have. So what I'll do is I'll just run another script here. And I think in this case I've added in the auto open as true. Okay, so what does it make that true? And then if I just save that. So what, what's going to happen here is it's going to take some of our default parameters. It's then going to cre create our chart. And because I've got auto open equals true, it's going to display it. OK, so there we go. And that's our chart. OK, so, so the chart itself all we really want is this URL here. Okay, so we'll just change that back to false. There. Okay, and then what we're going to is we're going to pass some parameters actually into to it. Okay, our basic data set is here. Okay, it's just basically a CSV file that I, that I managed to, to build and it's related to the state, the city, uh, the population, the crime rates uh, and, and so on. Okay, so what we really want to do is to be able to plot with an, an X, a Y and, and a Z. Okay, so that's this bit here where we've got our Python code and we call plotly and we get the URL back. We don't want the graph to be shown in the website. We want it to be shown as a as a URL. So uh, I've put the the parameter of auto open as off. Okay, so here we are. So when I look at the, the part that calls up the plotly function. Okay, so we'll bring up our Visual Studio, and uh, so let's look. Let's look at our our page. Okay, so this is the this is the page. This is the MVC page. So here are the here are the parameters passed uh, in in MVC. So we'll be kind of call up this controller, 
and we're going to pass in these values to it because it's a guess we'll pass the values in through the HTTP GET request and uh, we're actually specifying the CSV value the X and the Y so what we have is that uh, by analyzing the by analyzing the CSV we just pop off the values that we need for it so there's violent crime violent crime well we're using DF so we'll have a look at the DF one okay so there's uh, infant mortality rate that we have here and there is a uh, population so because we're using pandas we can actually parse off a column uh, through the the name that we're given the the column okay so so that's that and uh, we can create lots of other ones so let's let have a look at our controller and we'll see how we call it so it's a it's a get because we're we're performing an HTTP get not a post we're passing the parameters in and then we're calling up this script here so I have a little Python generator here that's creating a unique ID for the chart passes in the X values because because we might have spaces in between I've added in uh, the inverted comma uh, so if we had something like Python and uh, panda plot test 101 if we had infant mortality rate we'd have to define it like that because the Python would would parse it as as a space. Okay, and basically that's that's it. We call up call it up and then what we get is a return value which is the which is the URL and then to make it embedded we add the dot embedded onto the end of it. And then what we're gonna do is insert that as a as a an iframe okay so let's find let's find our file again okay so I've got Ajax on, Ajax on this but it's not actually used in this case so the partial view is called the plot 3 in this case just let me try and find where it is plot partial 3 that one ok and here it is so all I do is create an iframe I pass the view data which has got the the URL plus dot embedded and then I pass a few other parameters that stops the plotly logo on there it uh, it adds the mode bar at the top and so on okay so that's that's the way it, that's the way it works okay so you can see over here okay so we can try another one if you just look at the bottom of the browser page there you can actually see what's getting passed into it so that's going to call up plotly it's going to call up the Python script. The Python script is going to parse all the parameters that are required. And then it's going to pass that to Plotly. Plotly will create the URL for us. We add on dot embedded, and then we stick it into a, an, an iframe. So if you actually look at the source, Uh, there we can see the iframe there because it's a partial because it's a partial view it obviously gets uh, populated there if we had a post we could actually just update just this partial view through Ajax and then it would actually have to reload the, the, the whole page so just to show you that okay so that's the that's that link there okay so that's the that's the overall operation we just go back and have a look at our outline here. You should be able to see the operation. Uh, 
Okay, so there it is from the page. We pass them parameters into it. Uh, that calls up the MVC controller. MVC controller then calls the Python script. It then waits. The Python script goes and calls the API and does an API call. Returns back the URL. The URL comes back to the controller, and the controller sticks it in an iframe, and that's it. Okay, so that's been an outline of how you use uh, Plotly to plot bubbles.